Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna take a look at XL Victory Bell in the Open Ultra League with a new move. I have now my community day as well. It's currently also still in the middle of the community day, but this doesn't matter because you can take a look here today very early at the Ultra League variant of the Shadow variant of Victory Bell. So, um, if you enjoy this type of video, of course, there's always a lot of resources, and of course, I'm kind of sacrificing my own community day so I can showcase this stuff early on. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you have not already. Only around 50% of you are actually subscribed. It's free, and it would help me out quite a bit. And also, thanks so much for 75,000 subscribers. I haven't really said this before, but we hit 75,000 subscribers today. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, but let's move on into the gameplay. Let's move on into what I think about the Shadow Victory Bell. As we were able to already knock out one Pokemon and we should be able to get a shield from the second Pokemon here as well which is absolutely wild because it's a Pidgeot and look how low we got this and this is something that I can say as well I actually kind of copied the team that we got sent in earlier on today here with the Ultra League variant as well which is kind of funny kind of also similar to like Grassle variant here but we have the Auroras in the lead, the Seisop of the um, Annihilate, and of course the Victory Bell in the back. Here we're going to get the boost with the Annihilate, which doesn't really matter. We would have won no matter what. But this is of course going to help us, and yeah, this game is kind of over at this point anyway. So, what do I think about this Pokemon? It is sometimes a little bit tricky to play, but honestly I have to say... I enjoyed the Shadow variant of Victory Bell quite a lot in the Open Ultra League. Like, honestly, this Pokemon was so much fun to play, and I did not expect it. Like, honestly, I was, like, thinking the issue is basically for the Ultra League. Um, basically, if you're squishy, you have no chance. But um, I thought maybe I have a little bit more bulk now. It is an XL variant. It's, like, level 48 point something or whatever. Um, so it is going to have maybe a little bit more bulk. But I have to say, it is a very squishy boy. It is very, very squishy. But the pacing of this Pokemon is actually quite nice. And there are so many matchups where this Pokemon is also quite nice. So, um, basically, you're going to have matchups against something like a Polyrath, something like a Jellicent, something like basically our entire team. Like, if you think about it, against the be great, against the Aurorus, it can okay at least. You have quite a lot of matchups where this Pokemon is phenomenal to play. And so, um,. Yeah, I went positive, spoiler alert already, I went positive and I would have most likely won quite a few more games if the game wasn't laggy, as said in the beginning, I played those battles during the community day, it's still during the community day while I'm commentating, it's past the community day while I'm uploading most likely because it takes always a little bit, but um, basically I was playing still in the background with my Pokemon Go Plus Plus. And so it is going to be a little bit more laggier for me. Also, you see in the back rain animation, which I currently have on, which I usually try to turn off when I have those videos, which you can actually do, which maybe I make a video as well if you're interested in this on how to kind of um, try to get rid of some of the lag issues in Pokemon Go, which can be like there are some tricks for that but here for example i would have been able to catch the shadow ball without the lag but like i wasn't able to swap for no or like for whatever reason but we still were able to win this game so it didn't really matter Moving on, we're going to have the Reggie still here. Because we only really have one hard answer to it, I'm going to decide to swap into my Victory Bell to get completely destroyed by the next Pokemon coming in. Which I find always kind of interesting because like those teams are so weak to like something like a Swampert. So while on paper, of course here like it doesn't really matter because we don't run any kind of Mud Boy or whatever. While on paper, um, basically if you put in the Tunnel Flame or the Reggie still on PE Poke, you always get like the other Pokemon as like the first suggestion. So it does make sense to kind of pair them together. But like there are quite a few weaknesses that I don't really enjoy with this kind of pairing. But here, of course, for the opponent is kind of great. We'll also be forced to go for another charge move. They will survive another fast move of myself. So I have to go for the Weather Ball now, which is annoying. But they completely hard wall me anyway. And so I can just fall with this game. Next opponent, we're going to have here a very bad lead for us, but maybe we can still come back from this. We swap out into our Seisop of the Annihilate, and they swap out a very, very late into their um, own Jellicent. And so I decided to go for the bait. Honestly, um, Ice Punch is like basically suggested here for the Open Ultra League for the Annihilate. So we are running a moveset that maybe people don't really expect too much. While Night Sash is very common in the Great League, in the Ultra League, a lot of times Ice Punch is kind of what you want to have because they are quite a lot more flying types, I guess. Honestly, I don't even know why you would want to run Ice Punch here in this meta. But um, yeah, it is kind of what it is. But here we were able to basically get a quite a decent advantage. We got them fairly low and we have a shield advantage. And what you can see here is I am not going to go for a charge move. I kind of want the opponent to throw their energy because I want to get energy on my own victory balance. So I'm going to swap out after this charge move from the opponent because now I have two charge moves dot. I have a shield advantage. I have energy advantage. I know that I'm good against one Pokemon that's still there. So I just have to do a bit good against the Pokemon that they have in the bag. And as they swap out into the Polyrath, 
I would imagine they're going to be weak against me in the back. And so what we can do is we can go ahead and go for another Leaf Blade. Also, they say that every battle that I did today is going to be in this video as well. So there's literally nothing cut out. Perfect, basically, analysis for you to see on how this Pokemon are going to act in certain matchups. I actually saw like a Reddit post about how um, no YouTubers really put in every battle and whatever. For most teams, I don't put in every battle, but this may mainly a time thing than like basically, you, yeah, just trying to hide battles or whatever. This is not the case. I just try to go always around like 15 minutes in terms of my video length. I know, just like for me, like a sweet spot for like those videos, not too sure if there's something that really matters. Sometimes go a little bit over for like videos where, um, for example, my, my Legend run, you saw all the battles I did for that, which was like 15 battles, which was like 20 minutes of a video. But um, maybe I have to see, maybe I can do also videos that are a little bit longer, but for me, it's not really that I want to hide something. For example, every time you see me saying, okay, I went 200 points up, for example, with the Magnezone team yesterday, I actually went 200 points up with that. Like this is never a lie or like anything that made up or whatever. I don't really see the point of lying towards this kind of topic. So yeah, just something that I saw online and was like, hmm, I don't really enjoy those type of things where like people assume, okay, you cannot only want to show the best matchups or whatever, because I hit legend every time very, very early on. So I feel like you can kind of rely on what I say about teams. I say as well, for example, for Victory Bell, that this Pokemon does not enjoy future side at all. So hopefully they don't have it, but they do have it. And so we can forfeit. But yeah, Victory Bell is a Pokemon that I enjoy quite a lot and that I like quite a lot. But um, again, it's not going to be top meta Pokemon either. It's not going to be something that you want to run every single battle. But it is a Pokemon that is a viable, and that's kind of what I want to say with that. Here we're going to see, by the way, one of the hardest core breakers for this team, which is going to be Clefable, because Clefable in the lead is going to have access to a yeah Steel type move, which is going to be double super effective against our lead, and of course they're going to have Moonblast, which is going to be super effective against our Say Swap. So what do we do? We try to catch a move which did not work out, but we're going to be able to get out the opponent's Pidgeot, which is going to be very important for us. Because like this, we're going to see here that we're going to get another boost, which is kind of hilarious. But I don't really want to go for the charge move. Actually, I think I tried to go for the charge move there, but the game just lagged again, which is kind of funny. Um, but it doesn't really matter anyway, because we should be able to farm down here. So I'm not going to complain too much about it. And of course, like the, that the game was lagging is kind of also my fault. Of course, and the index fault in terms of programming. But my fault in terms of having uh, my Go Plus boss still in the background, which is causing some lags here. Um, so here we're going to still see something that the Victory Bell can do. The Victory Bell can do a Sludge Bomb, and the Sludge Bomb is going to get sadly shielded. Something that I did not really realize is that I didn't have a shield here anymore, but also what I didn't realize is the amount of damage Leaf Blade is doing. This was, by the way, the first battle that I did with this team, and I was not really too sure about how much Leaf Blade would do, but it is actually two-shotting a Clefable, which is absolutely wild, which I did not expect at all. So, like, a lot of times I think Leaf Blade is just going to be better in general, like, it's going to... Um, be enough to two-shot most Pokemon, they don't have to go up to a Sludge Bomb, no matter what. Here we're going to sadly lose this game as the opponent can still go for a charge move. Jokes on you, it's nice punch, and so we can win. So, um, what I also want to say about um, the Victory Bell itself is, you have great pacing towards the Leaf Blade, but you kind of always want to go for Leaf Blade unless like Leaf Blade is resisted and Sludge Bomb, or like Sludge Bomb is super effective, like a Fairy-type Pokemon or whatever, because um, Leaf Blade is a 35 energy move that does do like 70 damage against the opponent, so like basically uh, 2 damage per energy, while um, you only do 10 more damage with the Sludge Bomb for 15 more energy, which is pretty a bad deal there. So um, for most kind of cases, you want to go for Leaf Blade only. Leaf Blade is so much better compared to Sludge Bomb, but Sludge Bomb is still a decent coverage for this Pokemon. And I'm curious if Acid Spray actually has some play. I don't think in the Ultra League, but maybe in the Open Great League, it still has some play over Sludge Bomb, just because Sludge Bomb is such a... yeah. I don't know, I wouldn't say like bad move, it's like such a mediocre move, it's, I guess like better for this move itself. But here we're going to see basically the worst possible Pokemon to encounter for this team, which is going to be the Deoxys. Deoxys has coverage for the entire team, it has counter for our lead, it has um, what's called the Psycho Boost for basically our other two Pokemon, so it is a little bit of a trickier one, but can we still come back from this? We still have a chance here. We're going to be able to get um, some damage here onto the opponent's Stunfisk, which is a Pokemon that you rarely really see, but it's still a very decent Pokemon to play. Actually, I have a Shundo Stunfisk, which I should maybe build eventually, which I got just as a random home spawn, which is still like the wildest thing that ever happened to me doing just home spawns, basically. But um, here, as you can see, they're going to go for a charge move. It's going to be the Earthquake, and now I'm going to be a little bit 
on a tough spot. Here I wanted to go for an extra fast move before I go for a charge move, but it just didn't let me for whatever reason. But it is what it is. Like it's not that I, like it doesn't matter again. Like it doesn't really matter, but it is kind of annoying when the game just doesn't really work. But again, it is also kind of my fault because I was still playing at the side. Next opponent, we're going to have here the Auroras against the Mandibus. In comes the Jellicent. And here you're going to see also some parts of the great timing of our Pokemon. We're going to outspeed them to the first charge move, which is lovely. But we are not going to knock them out, which is not so lovely. So we can still take a Shadow Ball. We kind of end up at the same health as the opponent before. But um, yeah, we did super effective damage, but the opponent did only neutral damage. And this kind of showcases again how Bulk is kind of king in PvP, which is kind of something that I don't really enjoy too much. But it is what it is. I still kind of enjoy the update for the Victory Bell in general. Like, I think it is a great community day for PvP. I think it's a great community day for this Pokemon because it doesn't make it overpowered. I think, like, Wine Whip would have made this Pokemon basically top tier meta and would, like, you would see this Pokemon every single game. But like this, you're going to have more kind of options to play this one. And I kind of like this one. I think it's a great community day. I think it's a great idea to put Magical Leaf on this Pokemon because I feel like it kind of fits its purpose because it's still going to do some fast move damage but you're going to generate energy way faster than with a razor leaf and so i think it's a cool pokemon to play and it's a cool pokemon to build for both great as well as ultra league we mostly are going to take a look at the great league variant tomorrow if i'm correct with that because i don't really want to build another one so i almost i just wait until i can elite him it so, Greed and Elite. We're going to stay in for a little bit and can see what they can have as a moveset. If they have Trailblaze, it might be a little bit tricky, but I kind of want to swap out eventually because um, our lead is basically our only answer for Flying-type Pokemon, and so I kind of want to try out to see if we're going to get a Flying-type Pokemon out of here. I mean, it has wings, but it's not going to be a Flying-type here. It's going to be a Giratina. We're going to go straight for the Shadow Ball, expecting the No Shield, but this is going to be actually great for us because now just one Night Slash is all it takes to knock them out. And I really hope... I really hope that the opponent is deciding to go for a shield here because it's going to be a CMP tie and I would rather get some energy more with my lead but no, the opponent decides to not do this and here's something that really mattered sadly. I tried to go for the Night Slash as you can see there as well but I lagged for half a turn which allowed the opponent to get one extra poison jab in which they would have not been able to get in before otherwise and so I sadly going to lose out on this Night Slash and this is actually going to matter quite a bit especially as they're going to get lucky with the Scald as well getting the debuff immediately but um, they would have been basically quite a bit lower. Low enough that I most likely would be able to find them down eventually with my victory well and would have a different kind of win con at the end but um sadly this didn't work out again it's kind of because i was still playing at the side with my go plus plus which is something that you should never do if you play pvp but it's a community day it's a stardust community day i kind of wanted to catch some of the boys at the background as well but here we're going to be able to still get the uh, charge move off. Leaf Blade is going to get them low. We can try to go for the full foul number. They swap out into the Greedent. Here, if you only get off one charge move, it's actually better to go for the Sludge Bomb, but I still decided to go for the Leaf Blade because I'm fairly certain they would be able to outspeed me if I tried to go for the other one, but I want to see how much damage it does. It does quite a lot of damage, so this Pokemon is sadly going to knock me out, but still a good game there. Could have been different if we got the Night Surge off. Final battle for today, and what a lead this is, and why do they stay in here? Like, we're in high up elo range. Like, we're like 2800 rating, I think, somewhere around there. And they're staying in with a Gliscor against an Auroras. I'm not too sure what they're trying to do here because this is basically... I don't think there's like a matchup in the back that they could have that's worse for them. Because um, basically they actually get the boost here, which is kind of wild. Um, I'm always going to be able to win this one. Like either I can farm them down if they're going to go for the Earthquake at this far, like time here. Basically I would be able to farm down afterwards, which is going to be exactly what's going to happen next. Or yeah, I would have just been able to go for the Weather Ball spam, but I'm always going to be able to win this matchup with a ton of energy. They are going to be very slow at the swapping out here as well which is going to be great because now we cannot speed the Trevenant and so we can knock them out and it's just going to be a Polyrath against the Annihilate against our Victory Bell as well as our Aurorus and basically this game is over with that they're gonna go for the score they're gonna get the attack drop which is going to only like meta slightly because we can still get off the shadow ball we will see that we can get them fairly low as well we don't get to another charge move but one more fast move is all it takes from the shadow victory bell to knock them out so i'm most likely going to take a look at shadow victory bell quite a lot more times throughout the season so definitely stay tuned hope you enjoyed this feel free to subscribe and like and check out also the great league showcase from early on so i see you then bye bye